Galactus do. There was a time Galactus fought a Celestial. What's up, comic comrades? Are you ready for another trip to space? I heard you like ranking videos, so I'm here again with another one. This time, you'll be diving headfirst into a list of the most powerful entities in the Marvel Universe. Stay tuned until the end of the video and don't forget to hit that like button, consider subscribing and click that notification bell. Number 10. No. No ruled the Primordial Universe alone until the arrival of the Celestials, who began filling his domain with matter, light and life. He went to war against them and their creations, to return the universe to the Dark Void, creating many powerful weapons to aid him, including the Necrosword and the Klintar Symbiotes. No has been around since the dawn of the Marvel Universe. As a matter of fact, he lived when there was nothing. Then the Celestials came and shaped the universe, making quote-unquote space as we call it. No wasn't fond of this, as this was apparently his domain, or as he calls it, his kingdom. One would question this as it was all empty anyways, however, he claims that his kingdom, his abyss, was never empty and dead. Furthermore, he creates a living sword from his shadow, and with this sword, he decapitates a celestial. The other celestials quickly banish Null to the Void. This was, however, not a smart idea because the Void is where Null thrives. Number 9. Galactus You don't want to mess with Galactus unless you're the Silver Surfer, of course. The powers of Galactus are almost imperceivable, and many consider him to be the most powerful being in the Marvel Universe. First of all, Galactus is immortal. If he dies, he comes back to life. He also has the power to make other beings and entire universes come back to life if he wants to. Galactus can absorb energy and he's also immune to most threats he encounters, such as diseases, poisons and impact. Galactus is also extremely intelligent. Check please. Mmm. Some even say he's the most intelligent of all the villains of the Marvel Universe. He is lightning fast with everlasting strength and stamina. Oh yeah, and he can convert any matter into any other type of matter. Bottom line, Galactus is one of the scariest Marvel villains ever created, and really, we should all stay far, far away from him, even though he'll probably find us. Number 8. The Phoenix Force A powerful cosmic entity, an immortal being representing the life-death-rebirth cycle, all current and future life, and it is the nexus of all psychic energy to ever have existed, or to exist, or will exist. It has, at times, chosen a host to live within, granting the vessel nigh-omnipotent power. It has the capacity to create or destroy anything or everything. The Phoenix Force has had various hosts, but the most well-known and frequent one is the mortal mutant Jean Grey. Jean was 10 years old when her mutant powers of telepathy first developed. She was out playing when her friend was struck by a car. She linked to her friend as she was dying, and this early burst of power caught the Phoenix's attention. Later on, Jean became Dark Phoenix and flew into space and destroyed a solar system and a Shi'ar cruiser before returning to Earth to confront the X-Men. After a psychic battle with Professor X, she was defeated and her power cut back to Marvel Girl levels by a new set of psychic circuit breakers placed by Xavier. She and the X-Men are then transported to a nearby Shi'ar ship, and she's about to be put to death by the Shi'ar Council led by Xavier's lover Lalandra of the alien Shi'ar Empire. When Professor X called for a duel in all their names, the X-Men fought for what they believed to be Jean. As they fought her, the human portion of Jean resurfaced into Phoenix and committed suicide to prevent any injury to the X-Men. Number 7. Lord Chaos and Master Order Lord Chaos is an abstract cosmic entity that embodies chaos, disorder, randomness and formlessness. Along with his quote-unquote brother, Master Order, they ensure and represent the balance between chaos and order for the well-being of the universe. However, the two are constantly at odds with each other. Their origins are unclear, yet it is known that order and chaos serve as the opposing forces within a dimension called the Magic Realm, a place between fact and fantasy from which many magic users draw their power. Tired of their constant bickering, they created the Inbetweener and charged him with the task of keeping the cosmos in balance for them. The Inbetweener was then sent out into the cosmos to fulfill its mission. Order and Chaos were among several abstract entities that permitted the experiment which placed the powers of the infinite in the hands of mortals, by allowing energy from the universe of the Beyonders to slip through, leading to the creation of the Cosmic Cubes. Number 6. Eternity and Infinity Eternity came into existence when the universe was formed along with death, oblivion and infinity, and spontaneously assumed the collective consciousness of all living things in the universe. He is every living thing and every living thing is him, thus he controls everything in all planes of existence, with the exception of the living tribunal, who maintains the cosmic balance of power. Eternity is the physical incarnation of time, whereas his sister infinity represents space. 
Also, if Galactus ever dies or does not exist, the opposite of Eternity, Abraxas, would also come into being. Eternity is guarded by Captain Universe. The origin and precise nature of Eternity are unknown and unknowable. It is the sum total of collective consciousness of all living things in the universe, the embodiment of their life, as death is the embodiment of the ending of that life. Unlike death, which Eternity refers to as its sibling, Eternity does not often take an active hand in the dealings of the trillions of lives that make up its total. However, since controlling the being Eternity allows the controller to wield Eternity's unlimited powers over the beings that make it up, this entity is a target for extra-dimensional attackers of various abilities. Usually, Eternity can deflect such attacks without significant exertion, but on occasion has had to bring its own servants into play. Number 5. The Living Tribunal The Living Tribunal is a vastly powerful conceptual being, one who has existed since the multiverse came into existence. The Tribunal's only superior is the One Above All, an entity which is responsible for all life in the multiverse and possibly beyond. More on him later. The Living Tribunal often interacted with other conceptual beings, serving as their arbiter and judge. It has appeared as a giant golden humanoid using an embody created in the dimension of manifestations, with three cloaked faces, each representing a different personality. It has a blank space where a fourth face could be exhibited. The Living Tribunal has suggested that the fourth face became the enigmatic stranger. The other three faces make up the Tribunal's head. They are namely Equity, Necessity, and Vengeance. These represented the trinity of aspects of each universe. For example, in the main universe, they were represented by Galactus as equity, eternity in the form of necessity, and death as vengeance. Number 4. Protégé Protégé was a resident of the alternate future known as the 31st century, or Earth-691. It was prophesied that he was to be the living god of the Universal Church of Truth. As a plot to safeguard the young protege, the young Skrull shapeshifter Replica befriended and became a playmate to the young god. She was also a member of the UCT. Replica also came into contact with Malevolence, the demon daughter of Mephisto, who sought to become matriarch to protege. This was a plan that would place her in a position of influence over the powerful believers of the church. Protege became intrigued with the powers of Malevolence and stated that he would prefer her as his matriarch, opposed to the Stark warrior whose powers were manufactured, not manifested through birth, as he duplicated Malevolence's fire-projecting abilities. The immense powers of Protege drew the attention of the Living Tribunal, who was surprised when the young entity duplicated his powers. Number 3. The Beyonder Described as having more power than a million universes combined, the Beyonder was originally positioned as the supreme being within the Marvel Universe. As later revealed, he is an ancient entity from a race of beings who exist as the sum of everything in their multiverse, and he can control the fundamental fabric of space and time. The Beyonder can shape reality, regenerate on a cellular level, and change into any form. He also has cosmic strength, which he frequently puts to the test in order to learn more about humanity. He has demonstrated his incredible powers by warping reality to meet his desire for perfection. The Beyonder has also survived big blows from powerful heroes like Molecule Man, and he's absorbed whole universes in the process. Unfortunately for him, all that power came with a price. The Beyonder eventually realized that the world could not be complete or perfect, even with his manipulation. Since his debut, Marvel has retconned several of the Beyonder's powers. He even lost them to Doctor Doom at one time. However, his ability to warp reality allows him to potentially simulate any power he wants. Number 2. Death Death is an entity that has existed since the creation of the universe, considered the opposite aspect of eternity. She is responsible for leading Thanos down his villainous path. It was Death who visited Thanos and convinced him to kill his pirate captain and offspring years after reforming from murder. This chain of events led Thanos on his quest to destroy half of all life in the universe to appease Death. The latter is invincible due to her nature, has unlimited cosmic power, and is able to manipulate matter. The laws of the universe would have to change in order for death to have any weakness at all. Number 1. One Above All One Above All is the leader of the Celestials and is the most powerful member of their race. While not much is known about him, One Above All has been depicted as being far more emotional than the other Celestials, as he has been seen openly displaying fear, hate, and sorrow. While the reasons for his unique emotional state of being are unknown, it is possible that because One Above All spends almost all of his time on the Celestial Mothership, that he could be suffering from a Celestial equivalent of cabin fever. Encounters with One Above All are rare, though he has been seen by other denizens of the Marvel Universe, including the original X-Factor lineup. 
One above all is also a member of the Living Tribunal's court, where he and Ziran the Tester represent their people. One above all, like many of the Celestials, is an extremely powerful godlike being, possessing incalculable levels of strength, durability, speed, and energy projection. The one above all holds special authority and power over the majority of the Celestials. Enormous in stature, up to 2,000 feet in height, he possesses the ability to manipulate reality, control energy, and rearrange matter. He can teleport himself or objects across vast distances. Although near invulnerable, in the rare case of being injured or harmed, like all Celestials, one above all will regenerate near instantaneously. Capable of withstanding earth-shattering blows and easily dismissing nuclear bomb offense attacks, the one above all himself possesses the ability to generate energy blasts that are of an earth-shattering level and higher. On a side note, there is an unknown connection between the Celestials and hyperspace. It is possible that the latter is the origin of the Celestials' vast powers. But wait, there's more. Let me tell you about the real one above all. What? Didn't I talk about him just now? Nope, there are two above all. Although he has only made occasional appearances in the Marvel Universe, this one above all is said to be responsible for the existence of all life in the multiverse. First appearing in 2004's Fantastic Four issue 511, the one above all sees and knows all. With no set appearance, he also has the ability to show up anywhere and everywhere at the same time, and he exists beyond time and space. With so much unlimited power at his grasp, he is considered to be the most powerful character in the Marvel Universe. He is also the superior master of the cosmic overseer and judge known as the Living Tribunal. As the creator of the Marvel Universe, he has even taken the appearance of Jack Kirby, the comic legend who was the driving factor in the creation of most of Marvel's biggest franchises. But who do you think should be number one? One above all, or one above all? Please tell me in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't be above that notification bell. Peace out.